गुड आफ्टरनून और गुड इवनिंग टूडे सेशन इज अरेंज ऑन और गुड इवनिंग द फर्स्ट थ्री स्टेप्स of the forensic investigation process you are very much welcome the first three steps of the forensic investigation process you are very much welcome this is module number 2 of the forensic investigation uh master class i have already done module number number 1 completed so today i'm doing module number 2 i have already done module number 1 was on introduction to fraud and corruption management strategies the forensic investigation master class is divided into two parts part 1 is the introduction to fraud and corruption control strategies and then part 2 is the nine steps of forensic investigation process so from module number 2 module number 7 we will be discussing the nine steps of forensic investigation process uh my students and those who are newly qualified usually ask me how to start an uh, investigation assignment step number 1 to number 3 of the forensic investigation process explains the how of starting a forensic investigation assignment if if you follow this keenly and carefully you will have the confidence to start an investigation assignment without having any problem so i'm going to answer the how to start the investigation assignment question today before that we will i would like to define forensic investigation because forensic investigation is going to be the subject of module number 2 number 3 number 4 number 5 number 6 and number 7 so today we are we are covering uh, module number 2 which covers steps number 1 to number 3 forensic investigation covers a broad spectrum of activities with the terminology not strictly defined in the regulatory guidance or law books forensic investigation being an emerging and a relatively new profession now uh, the there is uh there is very little standardization as per its definition and also uh the terminology is in a world the term forensic investigation refers to any inquiry that is aimed at gathering evidence to either uh support disciplinary action or court proceedings forensic investigation touches on many areas including forensic accounting fraud and corruption investigation money laundering and what have you <laughs> forensic 
forensic investigation, uh, as I've said, uh, touches on many areas. It includes forensic accounting. And uh, forensic accounting in this context is used to describe the wide range of investigative work which accountants in practice could be asked to perform to sort out the disputes of financial nature. Another terminology that is used is forensic auditing. Forensic investigation is not restricted to financial forensics. It is also uh, uh, involving the investigation of hard crimes, violent crimes. The term forensic investigation means that it is an, a, an assignment that is done for consumption of the court. Various investigation techniques are usually used to recognize and to put together evidence to establish, for instance, the duration of the fraud, the fraud has taken alongside how the whole thing has been conducted and concealed by the people involved. Evidence may also be gathered to support other issues which will be relevant in the event of court case uh, 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 court case. Such issues could include the suspect's motive and the opening uh, to pub, uh, perpetrate or commit fraud. If the fraud involved uh, collusion between several suspects, any physical evidence at the scene of the crime or uh, contained in the document. Comments made by the suspect during interviews or at the time of arrest and any attempt to destroy evidence. Forensic investigations involve fraud investigation. Fraud investigation is the examination of fraud allegations using documents collected from the suspected fraud area or obtained externally via external confirmation. Other definitions. Other definitions of forensic investigations are as follows. Forensic investigation is a systematic inquiry or examination to know what is happening or what happened with an aim to correct evidence for or against the allegation. In financial management, an investigation will be referred to as uh, a forensic audit or an investigation or a financial investigation. For example, they may conduct an investigation or investigations into financial irregularities. According to ICFIP Incorporation, forensic investigation is the systematic application of financial accounting forensic accounting, digital forensics, investigative skills, to the gathering of evidence for use in court in support of or against an allegation. Forensic investigation attempt to establish what actually went wrong, why, how, when, where, and who was involved. If it is financial investigation, a first attempt will be to establish what sum of money, where is the money, and who are involved, and how are they involved, or supported with the financial, uh, forensically analyzed evidence and the proof beyond the reason of doubt. This is a quotation from Charles Kessner.
Forensic investigation is an allegation resolution technique or methodology. The forensic investigator is hired to find out whether or not the information gathered supports the allegation. There are many types of forensic investigations, but I will restrict myself to forensic investigation. That is the investigation of crimes like fraud, corruption, money laundering, and cyber crimes. The steps that I am discussing under this module are generalized for white collar crimes, but also apply to other forms of forensic investigation. Going by the definitions above, a forensic investigation must be carried out in a very systematic manner in order to gather evidence to support or dispel an allegation. The nine steps of forensic investigation, therefore, sets out the systematic approach to investigations. Types of investigation. The forensic investigators may be asked to do investigations of many different types. As I've already mentioned, the CFIPs can be called upon to investigate fraud, to investigate corruption, to investigate money laundering, to investigate uh, fire and crime, that is robbery, murder cases, and etc. They are the, under financial in, in investigation. There are three types of uh, forensic investigation. That is fraud examination or a fraud investigation, money laundering investigation, and asset misappropriation investigation. Forensic investigators are also called upon to investigate money laundering, terrorism, and general crimes. Many have argued that certified forensic investigation professionals, CFIPs, cannot investigate fire and crime. This is a very narrow thinking since any person who is well trained in the investigation process can investigate any crime given the opportunity and the legal backing. Corruption. Corruption and fraud can be put in three categories. Extortion, conflicts of interest, and bribery. According to various researchers, corruption is involved in all one, in all around one third of all uh, fraud cases. What I mean to say is, uh, here is that Corruption is a part of fraud cases, which means that corruption is a subset of fraud. This may appear ludicrous because people think that fraud is the, the bigger the bigger animal. The bigger animal is fraud. Fraud encompasses all of cases that involve trickery. Fraud involves also cyber crime. So fraud is more encompassing than corruption. Bribery is when money is offered in order to influence a situation. Bribery also involves the receiving of something of value to influence an official decision. Both the giver and the receiver are capable in a primary case that can be substantiated. Extortion. This is the opposite of primary. It happens when one demands money to secure or influence a particular outcome. It usually involves some kind of threat to deny of services or rights if the bribe is not given. Conflict of interest. 
while in conflict of interest fraud, the fraudster puts their influence, uh, uh, their influence to obtain personal gain that ultimately affects the company or the government. In some cases, though, the fraudster may not benefit financially. He or she may receive an disclosed personal benefit. For instance, a manager may approve expenses of an employee who is also a friend in order to maintain that friendship. Friendship, in this case, is the benefit the manager is getting, even if the expenses are erroneous. Conflict of interest may also involve sitting together in the tender committee to discuss tenders where one of them belongs to a relative. Asset misappropriation. This is the most common type of fraud. In this category, there are several types of fraud which can be listed as follows the most the most known feature is the theft of cash or other assets from the company for example cash theft this is the stealing of physical cash such as the bad cash from the clients company fraudulent disbursements this happens when the company cash is being used to make fraudulent payments Examples include billing schemes. This is where minor or major payments are done to fictitious suppliers, while payroll schemes are whereby uh, payroll schemes are done to fictitious suppliers. While payroll schemes are are whereby payments are done to fictitious employees. What is being said here is that uh, peering schemes that involve fictitious suppliers uh, also uh, are, uh, 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 in, are involving fraudulent payments, whereas fictitious payments to host workers are also part of the payroll schemes. In eventually fraud, this is the theft of inventory from the client company. This also includes uh, stock privileges. Misuse of assets is committed when our employees are uh, uh, use, misuse, that is, company assets for their own interest. Misuse of assets is the common such rule. Uh, fraud or the types of assets misappropriation since it does not necessarily involve taking the asset away. In misuse of assets, you need not to take an asset away, but you need to misapply it to your own business as opposed to the business of the company. Financial statement fraud. This is one of the most uh, devastated frauds that happen in organizations. Organizations, especially large ones, are usually driven out of business by the fraudsters who perpetrate financial statement fraud. This is the fraud that involves a lot of uh, a lot of cash, a lot of resources in the organization because this is perpetrated by the people at the top. Those people who, who perpetrate fraud, not for the sake of getting past fare or some lunch or some dinner for the family, but those who defraud for the purpose of uh, satisfying they are only greedy. They are only greedy. They are greedy. Therefore, they wanted to defraud as much as possible from their employer. So they steal in terms of millions and billions 
of gaps or equivalent resources. Money laundering. Generally, each year, large amounts of funds are earned from illegal activities like people smuggling, arms trafficking, tax evasion, drug trafficking, corrupt practices, and theft. In most cases, these funds are usually in the form of cash. The perpetrators who generate these funds always wanted to bring them into the legitimate financial system without raising any form of suspicion. To achieve this, they have to convert cash into other forms, which makes it more uh, usable and therefore less suspicious. In addition, it also puts distance in between the perpetrators' activities and the funds. Money laundering, therefore, is a name given to the procedure by which illegally obtained funds are made to appear legitimate. General crimes. This refers to crimes like murder, robbery, theft of goods, rape, and many others. Certified forensic investigation professionals here by this who understand the investigation steps well do a good job in investigating those crimes too. In fact, the aim of, the tra of this training is to develop a strong systematic inquiry approach that can apply to any type of investigation, including the general crimes. Preliminary review, step number one. After having gone through the introduction uh, to this part, the nine steps of forensic investigation, I will now move to uh, step number one. Step number one now starts the how of starting a forensic investigation. A keen student of this training should never again ask the question to any, uh, to any uh, put this question to any person because this is exactly the how of starting a forensic investigation or any type of investigation for that matter. It starts with the preliminary review preliminary or pre-engagement investigation. This is mandatory for anyone who wants to carry out investigation systematically and in a very effective and efficient manner. Before any engagement, the investigator must sit with the client, feast the client, this is the client's uh, industry or business, and they try to understand it is uh, 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 to understand uh, the nature and the purpose of the required investigation. Preliminary review or pre-engagement investigation exercise that is to find out facts about the forum. This is seeks the, uh, to understand uh, the following so that the investigator is well uh, informed about the client's, uh, the client's uh, environment, not only the environment, but the extent of the, the crime scene, the extent of the crime scene, the extent of the allegation, the extent of the investigation. The investigator will seek to understand the following before entering into uh, engagement contract with the client. Complexity of the client's operations. The possibility of the perpetrator's alleged wrongdoing on the alleged case and ending up in court. 
that is the possibility of the case ending up in court. The objectives of the client in the investigation, the client's industry, the regulations touching on the client, the expectations of the clients as to completion of the investigation. This will involve the timelines uh, the, 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 the client has. When does he expect to have the final report? This is the question you write the, the client to answer. The suspects of the alleged wrongdoing event. You need to get the information about the suspects of the intended investigation so that when you are carrying out the investigation, they should not mislead you. Witnesses of the suspected wrongdoing, if any, so that you can use them during the investigation, knowing the client and the, the nature of his business. When is preliminary investigation required? I've already said that certified forensic investigation professionals must not rush into taking up uh, investigation assignments. Never get excited. Never rush into signing an engagement or a contract letter. Immediately, the client indicates to you that he would like you to carry out the assignment that is when you should now move into the client's premises or the the yeah the the uh, the client's premises and start the uh, preliminary review this is a very important step because during this step you will ask the questions these questions by dan macro lorry 2013. Today, you would like to understand whether they would like it to prosecute. Do they want to terminate someone's employment by using the investigation, listen, uh, investigation report? Is there a focus on finding out exactly how and why the incident happened and how it can be prevented? Do they want to try and recover lost or stolen assets or cash? Is it a combination of one or more of the above objectives? Preliminary review can simply be considered as the initial stage of any investigation. In this step, the investigators seek to get basic information, which will guide them in coming up with a defendable what proposal to the client? It is done both prior and at the start of the actual assignment. This preliminary view does not only assist in coming up, coming up with an accurate uh, report, but it also assist you to get all around information about the client and the nature of the investigation assignment so that when you decide to go ahead and sign the contract for undertaking the or executing the investigation you are doing that out of an informed position This step does not only assist the investigator to get an understanding of the nature of the investigation, but also helps them in understanding the scope or extent of the assignment. During the preliminary review, the certified forensic investigation professional may seek or information to enable him or her to develop better understanding of the client's operations and the nature of the business. According to Livingston Ogden, Director of Investigations, the South uh, Sudan and Corruption Commission, the initial step in the forensic investigation is to understand the client's business environment. That is the information 
that should lead to the signing of an engagement contract letter. An engagement contract letter is simply a letter showing a legal binding uh, contract between the two contracting parties. However, in my view, the discussion and the signing of an engagement letter is the second step in any investigation. The process of conducting a forensic investigation is in many ways similar to the process of conducting any investigation, but of course, with some additional consideration. Important information about the allegation. During the preliminary review, the certified forensic investigation professor of CIVP will be in a position to gather the following information. Number one, time or a period of alleged wrongdoing or of perpetration. The types of alleged wrongdoing, how the client got information about the alleged wrongdoing, how was the offense detected and who reported it? The crime scene, the location of the alleged wrongdoing, does some evidence exist in the form of documents or tangible items indicating the possibility of wrongdoing? If some evidence is available, it has to be collected and be examined by the investigator to establish the probability of the existence or otherwise of, of the alleged offense. Constellations when accepting engagement or of the contract for investigation. Ask yourself the question whether you are up to the assignment. Do you have capacity to carry out the nature of the investigation? Do you have a team with the required skills and experience to execute the investigation assignment effectively? Do you have time required to complete the job? Do you have access to the special experts who uh, are required for the perfect completion of the assignment? Do you have access to the if international and cross-border operations are required, ask yourself whether you have the requisite resources, experience, and skills to carry out cross-border operations. Do you have the required connections to carry out the close border connect, uh, investigations effectively? Do you have the required resources? Look at your past experience in a similar assignments. Do you have the experience in a similar assignments? If not, can you uh, procure experts with experience in a similar assignments? to assist you uh, to carry out the investigation. The objectives of the client, this must also be considered because it is important. The objectives of the client, this must also be considered. Accepting the investigation contract, the forensic investigators must initially consider whether they are firm as the necessary skills and experience to accept the assignment. All the investigations in forensics are especially in nature. That this means that the work needs detailed knowledge of investigative skills alongside a legal framework. Forensic investigators should have received training in derogation and the interview techniques, as well as maintaining the safe custody of evidence gathered or corrected. Further considerations should comprise whether or not the client is an investigation.
file. If it is your investigation file, that is requiring the this kind of investigation, then you must also consider your independence. Because in this case, you will be required to be highly independent in order to carry out the uh, the investigation of your own file. Factors to be considered in accepting forensic investigation assignment are competency. Are you competent enough or do you have competent uh, uh, team mates, team members who can be able to handle the investigation effectively? Capacity. Do you have capacity to handle the type of investigation uh, the kind of investigation before you and uh, complete it uh, to the required standards. Experience. Do you have the relevant experience? Consider availability. It is absurd. If you can take up the assignment which you know you are not going to complete, Investigation professionals are not supposed to behave like carpenters. Those, those people who just take any order, they take orders, 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 promising to deliver tomorrow, but they will, they will not be deliver even if they are given time up to next year. Professionals should they say no when they do not, do not have the time. To carry out the assignment independence do you have the independence to do the assignment are you going to investigate the relatives if so uh the, then you, you you should uh decline the assignment how to prepare and the conduct preliminary review book an appointment with the prospective client attend the meeting and then discuss the allegation with the client Examine the financial statements of the client. Examine the external investigators' reports, if any. Ask the organizational structure for the organization structure of the organization of the uh, of the organization. Review the uh, the client's business environment. Based it on my experience. Step number one in forensic investigation includes understanding the client's business environment and that uh, the that environment involves or includes the following the structure of the organization internal controls and security systems nature of business ICD systems in use and the extent of reliance on those systems the complexity of the organization's operations the client's industry within which it operates, number of total staff members in the area of investigation, the possibility of having the instant linking with the client's branches, all subsidiaries, all suppliers, and customers. At this stage, the investigator is mainly interested in knowing the extent of the incident, that is the complexity of the client's operation, which may have an impact on the effectiveness of the investigation. The information gathered at this stage has great bearing, especially in the planning and the resource allocation for the investigation. Certified forensic investigators, like any other professionals, are expected to engage specialized experts to handle unique areas of the investigation. For instance, the gathering of computer and the digital evidence. The need of a special expert is determined at this first and the most important uh, stage. Preliminary witnesses interviewing will take place during 
the preliminary or pre engagement investigation. What if the decision to decline the assignment is arrived at? What if the decision to decline the assignment is arrived at? Some of my students always argue that uh, this kind of uh, step in the investigation process is unnecessary or it involves unnecessary expense and therefore the investigator should ask the client uh, to carry the the costs of this pre uh, pre preliminary investigation no client will uh, will accept such kind of knowledge uh, this is for your benefit this is for the benefit of the investigator so that he does not enter into an assignment which he cannot be able to complete where, to the satisfaction of the client and therefore get his reputation destroyed. And therefore, the investigator must bear the cost of this uh, pre engagement investigation. Planning to carry out assessment in a very cost effective manner, however, like using questionnaires so that you will only spend time analyzing the administrator of interviewing the client and the top officers one by one in a person. This is a mitigation uh, 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 process so that you do not enter into a lot of expense. Uh, and then when you decline the assignment you find that you are at a rose engagement contract is step number two you will essentially or basically use the information you gathered in uh, step number one the preliminary review uh when drafting the engagement contract when you are doing the engagement contract after an extensive preliminary review you are doing uh, so from an informed position and therefore you uh, uh, use the information you gathered from the preliminary review uh, to enter into a very good contract which will not put you under pressure because you must have estimated the number of staff you use, the resources you use, the time you require to complete the assignment, and therefore you will not enter into a contract that will put you under pressure in any way. I'm summarizing because time is really running. Uh, running out summarize. trying to summarize time is really running out uh, types of forensic audit engagement we have the short term short term engagement and the long term engagement Forensic investigation or audit. A forensic investigation combines the use of investigative skills to situations that may involve legal and resolve. Forensic investigations are usually instances like the ones below. Deception investigation, involving misappropriation of funds, alongside tax evasion, money laundering, and insider trading. Quantification of laws in the case of insurance claims. Establishing the profit share of a business partner, uh, partners in the case of this law. The engagement scope and the acceptance considerations. 
the objective of the investigator in applying international standards of investigation is an uh, in an investigation of a single financial statement of a specific or of a specific aspect report or item of financial statement is to address appropriately the special considerations that are relevant to the acceptance of the engagement the planning and the performance of that engagement forming an opinion and the reporting on the findings of an alleged wrongdoing planning and the resource allocation is step number three <coughs> sorry once you have gone through step one and step two you are now ready uh, to start planning for the investigation planning here means assembling all what you need in terms of resources equipment everything staffs experts special experts everything uh, if the uh, vehicles if we need them for traveling to the branches and uh, also uh, uh, other logistics if you will be required to travel outside the country that is in the case of cross-border operations this is where you should now assemble what you need before you can now start attacking the investigation you cannot you cannot study the investigation without planning if you do that then it will be like uh, a captain uh, going to see without a compass you will head nowhere you get lost in the IC. A planning overview. Planning phase of an uh, of an uh, of an uh, interview. What I'm I'm saying here is that during planning, you will also plan the interview process. The interview process is very important, and that's why it will be discussed as one of the steps. And in fact, step six, uh, step. Uh, uh, step uh, six and seven are dedicated to interviewing of witnesses first and then suspects. During the planning, you will be planning about interviewing suspects. Because as you carry out uh, the investigation, you will be carrying out preliminary interviewing of suspects and witnesses as you gather uh, a, a, a evidence before you come to the main uh, step of interviewing witnesses which may this means that interviewing is a function that will perfect all through the investigation right away from the beginning because when we uh, when i was discussing preliminary with you i talked about interviewing the client that means that interviewing starts from the preliminary review and then it continues all through uh to step number uh, number seven when the suspects are interviewed so you have to do the planning uh, build into your planning the interviewing process those who are going to carry out the interviewing what you are going to use in interviewing the rule the interview room must be planned right from the start and this is the right place where to start planning for that kind of uh, 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 
uh, any formations. You should set all the objectives of the interviewing everything right away from this planning stage, in addition to putting together other resources, the <clears throat> assembling the team. Right Let us move quickly to the assembling of the team. Oh, yes. Assembling of the team, you'll find that you will have uh, a very good mix of expertise. If you are going to carry out a very complex oh, yes. investigation, Assembly you must have forensic accountant, finance accountant, the legal counsel to advise you all to computer and the digital forensic experts. And the company security personnel will be looped in to assist you. Uh, the company management to provide you with information and the human resources personnel to give you the uh, the background history of the suspects and the witnesses and also if there is any uh, disciplinary uh, information in the records they will be able to provide Let us discuss briefly the uh, the motive. Uh, Let us discuss briefly the motive. This is the most important element to prove uh, that the suspect uh, perpetrated the fraud or the crime, because there must have been a motive. There must have been opportunity. There must have been a means to perpetrate the crime. This must be identified and uh, recorded at the time of uh, planning and resource allocation. This will help later on uh, during interviewing. The advice, uh, this should be uh, put together if uh, as much as possible because this will be used during interrogation that is that is during the uh, uh, during the interviewing of suspects if there is an uh, evidence collected should be put in a file where the the file should be procured and then or saves where these exhibits will be kept for uh, forensic examination so at the time of planning uh, we must uh, you must acquire the storage for the, uh, the 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 evidence the physical evidence uh so that they are not uh, contaminated at this time is when you will also procure the chain of custody. Let us move uh, a faster. Uh, let us talk about uh, about the forensic investigation logbook. Uh, this logbook uh, must be procured at the time of a planning any groups and many things and even groups must be procured at the the, the time of uh, uh, the time of planning so that when you start the investigation and correcting evidence you will not be contaminating them uh, and the medics use graphs uh, to prevent uh, them uh, from being contaminated by the uh, 
whatever infection is there in the patient. But the investigators uh, use gloves uh, to prevent contamination coming from themselves to the uh, to the exhibits, so that they are preserved for further forensic analysis. Crime scene kit. Criminal investigators apply a variety of materials and instruments in collecting evidence from a crime location. Some of the materials could include the following. Uh, they are there in a table. Uh, you will go through that table. Uh, you have the presentation. Uh, replay it over and over again to go through the uh, the this uh, crime uh, uh, crime scene kit and they try to understand the items that are required for you to carry out the uh, investigation uh, effectively let us move next uh, crime lab equipment those are the equipment that are supposed to, to be used in the lab uh, used in the, in the forensic investigation lab, you will also go through them and rewind, rewind and replay the presentation as many times as you wish to make sure that you understand all this. Because of press of that of time, I will not go through them uh, one by one. I will, I will. Uh, be now uh, talk about uh, sketches sketches are involved especially when you are when you are doing uh, cases like murder cases uh, robbery cases you are supposed to use sketches uh, to demonstrate uh, how the 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 crime was perpetrated and the positions of the exhibits that were found at the at the crime scene. Uh, in, <coughs> in depicting the for one, the sketch should be to the front reflect accurate measurements. Uh, the sketch should reflect accurate uh, measurements of the distances uh, in the at the crime scene. Indicate campus direction or to the north, design the scale. If no scale is used, it stays far. Contain a region that explains all the symbols or letters used to identify objects on the scale. Military symbols are used where practical. Uh, and then you have the rough sketch, a rough sketch which will look like that. That is the rough sketch. Uh, which is not drawn to scale, and then uh, you move to the to, to refine it later on uh, to get the uh, the refined uh, sketch. These are some of the equipments you'll be using to draw your sketch, and then you have the finished sketch, which is ready now to be presented to a photograph to accompany your report to explain how you collected the, the the evidence, how the seal was looking like, and uh, etc. And then, uh, uh, those are the, the still more equipment, the list of more equipment, or you can, you will be using to do the sketch and the sketches are the usual done when you are doing the hard crimes in the investigation that is violent crime, robbery, rape cases and uh, murder cases. Uh, that is when you are supposed to use the uh, the sketches. End of the lecture. I've moved somehow very fast because the presentation was very big. I had underestimated uh they uh, underestimated it it was too much it was supposed to go into two presentations 
but nonetheless, I've gone through it, and now you can be reviewing it, you can be replaying it as you go through it. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, we had the CFIP, uh, Kenneth Chikweni from Zambia, and uh, he is the only person who has indicated that he's present. Uh, thank you very much for being patient and uh, uh, listening or following the lecture or two. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening and bye bye.